Well, Frank's extraordinary account is one among millions that have undergone aggressive and expensive surgery to save their lives from heart disease. And as we've explained, the cost of these procedures can be exorbitant. And the daily medication that, that follows up isn't cheap either. So ask yourself something. What if you could prevent or even reverse the effects of heart disease? Well, Frank spoke to one expert convinced that this hypothesis isn't just theory, but fact. Dr. Joel Furman is a family physician and researcher who specializes in preventing and reversing disease through nutrition. He's also a best-selling author, and his latest book is called The End of Heart Disease. Dr. Furman, thanks for joining us. In your book, you say that heart disease, coronary heart disease, which is one of the number one killers in the world, can actually be prevented and even reversed. But how is that possible? That's right. Even the question demonstrates that people don't recognize the simplest fact that heart disease is completely unnatural for the human species. It never happened before in human history. It doesn't happen in the wild kingdom. There are actually primitive populations and even areas of the world today where heart disease doesn't exist, where people eat a more natural diet. The point is, is that we don't have to have heart attacks. We don't have to have strokes. It's predominantly a nutritional issue and it doesn't have to happen to you. You can do what it takes right now to eat a diet that's nutritionally superior and obliterate the possibility of having a heart attack or a stroke. But Dr. Furman, the way the medical industry works, basically we're given a diagnosis as patients and then we're told we need radical surgeries, in my case, uh, quintuple bypass heart surgery, but we're rarely told about what nutrition can actually do for us. What does that mean for patients? You know, that's my mission. My mission is to give people comprehensive informed consent, meaning that if they knew that heart disease is a reversible condition, they know they don't have to be on blood pressure lowering medications the rest of their life. They don't have to be on statin drugs to lower their cholesterol. They don't have to be on diabetic medications. They can lose the weight, get rid of their diabetes, lower their blood pressure to normal, bring their cholesterol down to normal. And the point I'm making here to, that I'm offering this, you know, almost a guarantee that, say, heart disease would be a very, very rare occurrence. It would almost never occur. This promise is based on achieving a normal cholesterol with, without drugs, a normal blood pressure without medications. In other words, a normal glucose level without medications. You have to earn it through excellent health, excellent lifestyle. That means proper nutrition. And when you do that, a proper weight, waist measurement, you know, good physical fitness, the right type of food, heart disease just doesn't occur. So the, so, and I'm saying that not only could prevent you from needing these medications, but you don't have to have angioplasty and bypass surgery and stent placement, because in most cases, for people with stable coronary artery disease, those procedures do not extend lifespan. They just relieve pain. The people are left with the same risk before, after the procedure as they were before the procedure, because those procedures only address a small part of the heart those areas that were older, I should say they're more stable plaques, where the younger, more vulnerable plaque, the ones that cause heart attacks, are not even addressed for that person having that, undergoing those procedures. So in some way, they increase your risk, because now they put you at increased risk of having a clot where the stent ends and the person has to be on a, a blood-thinning drug the rest of their life can increase the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. But the point I'm making now, too, is even the medications for blood pressure lowering have side effects that people aren't, talked, aren't discovered and aren't talked about to people. If they knew, for example, that 10-year studies on people, on women, for example, taking these blood pressure medications 10 years or longer shows that they may double the risk of breast cancer and other cancers. Even statin drugs have been shown to dramatically increase risk of breast cancer, just as an example. And, and for the elderly, lowering the systolic into the fable range with multiple medications can cause the diastolic blood pressure to get too low to prevent adequate return of blood to the lungs and heart quick enough to refill with oxygen in time, increasing a person's risk of irregular heartbeat, heart attack, and sudden cardiac death. Tell us a little bit more about the diet itself. How does it work and what does it include? This diet is revolves around unrefined plant foods. We're talking about whole natural foods like beans and green vegetables and berries and nuts and seeds and onions and mushrooms and beans. The point here is that the American style diet, which is being spread through much of the world today, is over 50% of calories from processed foods. And we're talking about things like pasta and bread and cookies and crackers and salad oil and mayonnaise and donuts and cold cereals. We're talking about white rice and white flour and sugar and oil is the majority of calories in the American diet. And much of the world today is eating too much processed foods. So we're talking about reducing that tremendously, even eliminating processed foods. And then 
In America here, we have about a third of the diet, 32% comes from animal products. And we see this animal product intake goes from 5% to 10%. You increase risk a bit. But as it goes from 10% to 20 or 30%, like we have here in this country, we see almost everybody develops heart disease when you get to that high 30% figure where people are eating animal products almost every meal. So that animal product consumption has to be dropped down considerably. So as we're reducing animal products considerably, and wiping out or reducing processed foods, the question is, what do people eat? And they eat things like intact whole grains, like steel-cut oats, with seeds like flax seeds or, sun, or sunflower seeds or, and, and, you know, and berries and fruit on it. And then for lunch, a big salad with a bowl of vegetable and bean soup, which you make on the weekend. Maybe it could be spicy. Maybe it could be lentils and split peas. Maybe it could be azuki beans or red kidney beans. Maybe it's a chili or a bean burger. We're talking about hearing salad, soup or chili or bean dish and piece of fruit for dessert. And then a dinner too, and if we're using animal products to flavor a mixed vegetable dish, we're using it as a condiment, just as a flavoring agent, not as the main central part of, part of calories in the meal. When we make the diet not just richer in these plant foods, but it's focused on these high nutrient foods that contain plenty of antioxidants and phytochemicals, we're talking here about a diet that's nutrient rich and marginally and, and not excessive in calories and higher in plants, lower in animal products, and we put these features together, you literally see populations that live without heart disease. You're talking about preventing and actually reversing heart disease through the use of proper nutrition. This is really remarkable. Let's say a patient like myself decides to take you on here. How long will it be before I could actually see some results, doctor? Well, that's the amazing thing. I gave an example in my book, The End of Heart Disease, of a person who was having chest pain. He was having unstable angina right at that moment when, he, when, he, when I approached him. And, you know, that's a, it's called acute coronary syndrome. That's an emergency condition. You should go right to the hospital and be treated urgently because he could have a heart attack. But he refused that. But so just demonstrating how advanced his condition was, he was ready to have a heart attack. But over a period of time, a period of weeks, he could walk again without getting chest pain in a few weeks. Within a few months, he could run without getting chest pain. Within 12 weeks, he could run at any speed and not, not um, re-stimulate his chest condition. In other words, we show that within a few month period, two or three months, people's chest pains lessen and disappear. And over a period of a year or more, their, their, their obstructions reverse to a degree where the test shows the flow has been greatly increased to their heart. So it doesn't take long. By the time a person can be evaluated and get a, and, and have those procedures like bypass surgery and then rehab again, by that time, we can have people feeling better, having lost 20, 30 pounds, having their chest pains be reduced and going away. In other words, people can take control of their health without these, not just expensive, but dangerous procedures that are needless and futile because the person isn't left in a healthier state and they're not really taught the right way to live after the procedure. The point is, is that just like the weight can melt off the body and the person can become non-diabetic and their blood pressure can drop, the obstructive plaque in their heart, especially the most vulnerable plaque, that's most laden with cholesterol and softer, and that's the most dangerous type of plaque. That's the plaque that reverses easiest first. You reverse the more dangerous, softer plaque first, setting the person immediately at a safer stage within weeks of starting this program. It's really a remarkable option for bringing an end to heart disease. Dr. Joel Furman, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, it's my pleasure. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.